Hello, I'm Dan Klein, and this is my colleague, Paula V. Madikasira. We're on the energy electronics team at Lux Research. And with over $1 billion being funded into the LED industry, it's really become the poster child of opportunity, but also hype. Every day on the energy electronics team, we focus on emerging technologies and try to understand how they'll impact incumbent and emerging companies alike. Now, $1 billion, $1 billion speaks where has it been speaking the loudest? A majority of the $1 billion in venture investment has in fact and still continues to go into innovation in materials for LEDs. So more specifically, substrates and wafers, uh, which in the LED industry is really GAN on silicon and GAN on bulk GAN that have attracted significant amounts of venture investment uh, around the world. That being said, uh, major players have not stood still. Um, a lot of companies, most notably Toshiba, recently acquired Ganon silicon assets from Ridgelux to ramp it up to scale and introduce products based on Ganon silicon. Samsung uh, has essentially decided to uh, commercialize its own internal Ganon silicon program to introduce products into the market next year. And of course, you have companies like Sora that have already begun to introduce Ganon bulk GAN based products into the LED industry. So probably, and some of those players, sure, they're, they're major, um, but I noticed you didn't mention any of the lighting incumbents. Some could argue that Samsung it's, uh, could be a lighting incumbent, it's one of the largest LED manufacturers, but that's really by virtue of its LCD business. Um, where, where are companies like Philips, Osram, mm -hmm. GE? Uh, just as much as any of the companies that you just mentioned that are incumbent haven't put out press releases or you know, massive campaigns to declare that they have actually you know, done work in this space, both in Ganon Silicon and Ganon Balkan, mm. does not mean that they don't have the capabilities. And so they're not just pumping the press. Exactly. They just haven't found the obvious economic benefit just yet to move away from Sapphire into Ganon Silicon or Ganon Bulk Can. Well, so Paul, we actually did a report in Q2 of 2013. It was called Dimming the Hype. And in it, we projected, or we estimated that 2013's market share for Sapphire, the incumbent technology, is at 93%, an astounding 93%, the balance coming from silicon carbide, basically Cree. And if we consider, consider the cost potential and the uh, traction with incumbent players and the slow pace of ramp for new players, it doesn't change that much by 2020. We're talking about 69% Sapphire by 2020, and that's on a dollar basis. On a volume basis, it's 80%, so clearly ASPs are declining. Now, um, the story seems to be, you know, the incumbent technology is really refusing to yield to any of these emerging alternatives. Is this familiar? It's in fact very eerily similar to the solar industry in many ways. Um, but before I get to that, it's important to remember that just as much as you said Ganon Silicon and Ganon Bulk Gan may not have a huge portion of the market share, they certainly will still find uh, adoption in niche applications such as in automotive lighting and commercial LED lighting. Now, when we look at the parallels that we can draw between the solar and the LED space, uh, one of course, just as in solar, the LED industry went through a huge phase of overcapacity, largely due to aggressive capacity expansions by Chinese companies, which essentially ended up undercutting Western peers, uh, not just in price, but this subsequently led to a severe margin compression across the value chain. Um, and two, we can again, uh, in many ways, uh, GAN on silicon, uh, the way it's positioned in the LED industry as being the cheaper and potentially more effective alternative to sapphire, uh, to me sounds just as thin film solar was positioned in the solar industry. But to be fair, Paul, I mean, we do expect that GAN on silicon will achieve some market share. Exactly. So maybe, um, maybe a, a more specific comparison would be to SIGS. We believe SIGS has potential in the solar industry. and. So GAN on silicon is maybe the SIGs of the LED industry? Exactly, and I'm, I would even take it further to say GAN on bulk GAN, which obviously promises to offer superior performance, is very much like cattle of the solar industry. So GAN on silicon, the SIGs, and bulk GAN is the cattle of the LED industry. Exactly. But with that back, backdrop, where do you think the opportunities really lie for those looking to get into the market today? We might as well continue the solar, you know, the solar parallels. Uh, we saw the exact same thing in the, uh, in the early stages of the solar industry where everybody is just so narrowly focused on improving that active component, so the solar cell. Um, same thing with the LED dye. 
Now, what was ignored for too long with the solar industry, and we're seeing the exact same thing with LEDs, is that nobody's paying attention enough to non-actives. So you have the dye. What about everything just beyond the dye? So the phosphors, the encapsulation, thermal interface materials, even beyond the package. Technologies around thermal management, bulk thermal management, drivers, optics. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities for innovation and to get profit by looking beyond the dye. So what you're telling me is, if I want to get into the LED industry, stay away from the dye as, as much as possible to stay relevant in the game. Yeah, I mean, I think the situation that we saw with Toshiba getting in with Bridgelux is going to be the exception. And we don't even know if it'll work. There are plenty of opportunities outside of the dye for companies to participate in profit. In many ways, uh, I think what you've just said about the opportunities beyond the package of the dye um, resonates very much like what happened in, and continues to happen in the solar industry where all these incremental investments in um, products such as optics or you know, essentially non-active such as optics or thermal management or phosphors and even beyond into power electronics for the LEDs itself clearly will have a substantial impact on efficiency and, and cost, which seems to be the single unifying theme across the value chain. Efficiency and cost, couldn't agree more. Thanks for joining us. For more information on LEDs and power electronics and other research from our Energy Electronics Intelligence team, please visit us at www.luxresearchinc.com or email us at info at luxresearchinc.com. Thanks.